In this presentation, we will review the product feature opcwpf.net. This is one of 14 product features of the full opcsystems.net product. We will use Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 and Microsoft Expression Blend 3 to create WPF applications that can also be deployed as smart client applications, as all of the components in opcwpf.net are 100% managed. You do not have to write any code to implement the controls. You simply set properties to automatically update values within the controls. To see an example of what properties are available, open the program group under opcsystems.net and select the WPF example application. From the example application, we can select menu to open up an example 3D graphic. This application was created with Microsoft Expression Blend. Also from the example application, you can select controls to see any number of the controls demonstrated on how they are implemented. Here we can see how the labels, you can control the content, background, foreground, border brush, opacity, flashing, all different properties are demonstrated in this example form. Let's take a look at the button's controls. You can change the content of a button automatically can change its enable state based upon a boolean tag change the visibility based upon a boolean tag you can skew the size of the button you could scale it here we can see the bit button is getting much smaller and then we're actually flipping it upside down based upon a negative scale number we're rotating the button based upon an analog signal changing the height and width even the tooltip of the button itself can be changed we also have the ability to implement keyboard and numeric pad entry. Along with confirmation to be able to change the state of the item. There are many other controls in this example application and I encourage you to investigate each one of them. Also demonstrated in the WPF example is the data component that's part of the opcwpf.net product. This data component allows you to access the values programmatically so you can read and write values from within your own code. We will call it add tags method on the data component and we will then receive events of any time that the values change for the items that we're subscribed to. This code is similar to what you would find in the vb.net example, also installed in the program group opcsystems.net. There we see the example code that you can review. Now let's see how we can create some of these example applications ourselves using Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 and Microsoft Expression Blend 3. You can also use Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 and also Expression Blend 2. Let's start with Visual Studio. Projects that you create with Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 are also interchangeable with Expression Blend 3. So you can create a project in one and open it in another. In Visual Studio, we'll select File, New, Project. We'll select a WPF application and the window designer will appear. If this is the first time you're using the opcwpf.net product in Visual Studio, you'll want to set up your toolbox environment. To do this, right click in the toolbox space and you can add a tab to add the controls to. Next you'll want to select choose items 
And this brings up a dialog where you can select which .NET components you want to include in your toolbox. We want to select the tab for WPF components. Then scroll down till you start to see OPC WPF controls. The first control is OPC WPF border. And scroll down to the very end control with the namespace OPC WPF. You can select all of those controls and hit the space bar to select all of them. Then select OK to add those controls to your toolbox. Once the components have been added to the toolbox, you can then select them to drag them onto the window. Let's drop in the label control. With the label control, let's now right click on it to select properties. You can also hit the F4 key to bring up the property inspector. The most common property of a label control is the content that's displayed within the control itself. Just below that we'll see another property group called Content OPC Systems. There is a property which is Content underscore Tag. For each of the properties that you would want to automatically update there's a corresponding tag property assignment to allow you to define it to an OPC systems.net tag or a direct OPC item from an OPC server. There is a browse button that appears to the right of the editor. When we select this it brings up the tag browse dialog. This brings up an important point if you're using Microsoft Expression Blend 2 or Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. You want to use Windows Explorer to go into the program group of the installation directory of OPC systems.net. That's under Program Files, Open Automation Software, OPC systems.net. Within that directory, there are a few other subdirectories. There's an OPC WPF 3.5 for the .NET Framework 3.5, and also a 4.0 for the .NET Framework 4.0. So if you're using Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, you want to go into this directory and copy the files specifically the OPC WPF .design DLL, the OPC WPF Visual Studio .design DLL, and the expression .design DLL for Blend 3. So within this directory, these are the components for Visual Studio 2010 and Blend 3 development. In the WPF 3.5 directory is the components for Blend 2 and Visual Studio 2008. In the common directory of OPC Systems.net, we have already replaced the design components for Visual Studio 2008 and Blend 3 as the default. The runtime DLL, OPC WPF.DLL, is common for all development environments. From the tag browser, we'll select the local service that's running on your system. When we select this, the first selection in the list is Direct OPC. This allows you to connect directly to OPC servers without creating OPC systems.net tags. When you select an item, you see that it places that OPC item in the path and it builds an entire Direct OPC item tag path to your structure. I prefer to take advantage of the OPC systems.net tags. These tags have the ability to bring OPC items into the real-time database, but also implement calculations, set up alarm limits, implement time on and counts to count how many times an occurrence of a value has occurred. And the setup of the OPC systems.net tags is demonstrated in the training video of data sources. Let's select the ramp2 tag and select the parameter value. That returns the tag name ramp2.value into the property content underscore tag. Tag names are case sensitive. Now if we go into debug, let's see what happens with that control. There we see the window up here and we see the content within the label automatically updating based upon the value from ramp2. Let's see what else we can do with the label control.
From the property inspector at the top, we see that we can change the opacity the visibility of the control change the background foreground and border colors of the control determine whether the control is enabled set the tooltip of the control set the background tag property of a control. This is used for code development if you want a place to stuff a value within the control. It is not a visible property that you would see on the window, but you could access the value from your own code. With the content property, we do have the ability to format. So we could change the float format since the value coming from the OPC systems.net tag is a double. Now when we run the application you can see that the content has changed. We can also automatically determine the height and the width of the control based upon .NET tags. And one of the more fun things that you can do is you can transform the control. You can actually rotate it, skew it, scale it, Let's take that same signal ramp 2 and we'll rotate the control based upon the value. We know that the value ranges from 0 to 1 so I'll set the gain to 360 and now when we run the application you can see that the label is actually rotating. 